Hi everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie and I am crossing the Atlantic on the Queen Mary 2. In this video, I'll give you a full ship tour. I gotta warn you, it's a little quirky. But first, I wanna give a shout out to Shane and Cody, two of my Trips with Angie subscribers in Denmark. I got to meet them on our European adventures and they had some great ideas about how to celebrate my 500th video and 10,000th subscriber. So stay tuned for that. But let's get to the tour. We'll start on deck two midship in the grand lobby. These beautiful floor arrangements change every day. On one side there, you have the purser's office or guest services. It'd be called on a different ship. And then you'll see the high ceilings. I think it's an absolutely beautiful grand lobby. I love that rendering of the ship. On the other side, you'll find the casino. The casino is a little bit small, I thought, for a ship of this size. 2,700 passengers, but there's a small casino bar and some table games that are available. Also on this deck, you'll have the tour office for shore excursions on a transatlantic. That just means upon your arrival in New York. We're going to start by heading forward to look at the Royal Court Theater as well as the illuminations. You see this big board at the end of the hallway. That's called the Maritime Quest. And there's these storyboards and information and interactive screens throughout the ship. And that board tells you where they're all located. And I'll show you more of them. Here's the Royal Court Theater. This is where the evening shows took place. It's a two-story theater. So this is the second floor. So you can see kind of the overhang there. We had production shows, guest performers, a violin duo, and the orchestra was wonderful. So there, as you can see, into the upper deck. And then here's a view of what it looks like if you're in the upper deck looking down over the Royal Court Theater. Now, the lectures were not in here, and I'm going to show you where the lectures all took place. So heading out of the Royal Court Theater, we're going to head down the hallway past the Future Voyage desk. They had some presentations, and on your TV, they showed you all the different room categories on the three Cunard ships. This area was a fun little hidden area where they set out board games and puzzles. So if you wanted to have a great ocean view and enjoy some downtime, this was also where some of the good Wi-Fi was if you were looking for that. Now we're in the very front of the ship. This area is called the Connections Rooms, and these are basically conference rooms. And uh, some of the different activities would take place here. The computer lab is also located here, so if you didn't bring your own device and you wanted to get on Wi-Fi, you could do that here. And now here's some more of those boards I was telling you about. So this is one of the hallways that has the Maritime Quest as part of it, and it takes on a particular history of Cunard Line. It also has all the fun plaques of when the ship went to one of the first ports of call. So now we're back kind of in that general connections area and we're going to head upstairs to deck three. So now we're deck three forward and this is where we'll find illuminations. This is where the lectures all took place. So we had four guest lecturers on board that had a number of very interesting topics and they set up here. So it's a very large theater. I think it's almost exactly the same size as the Royal Court Theater. It also houses the planetarium. The planetarium had two different shows and to reserve them, you go to myvoyage.cunard.com. Once you are on board and connected to the ship's Wi-Fi, you'll click entertainment and then you'll be able to see the schedule of when they're going to take place and reserve a time for you and whoever is in your cabin. I thought Dynamic Earth was a little better than Infinity Express, but they're both just okay, if I'm being honest. So again, here on deck three, we find another one of these Maritime Quest hallways with storyboards um, about the history of the Queen Mary 2 and the Cunard line. Now we're gonna head back towards the center of the ship. And this is another one of those areas that has pretty good Wi-Fi and chairs along the windows. Heading up the stairs, now we are on deck three in front of the Royal Court Theater. Deck three is where your shopping adventures are going to begin. This is where the shops are located. You see here, you head towards midship. This is your alcohol shop. Lots of gin since this sailing originated in the United Kingdom. You have your perfumes, cosmetics, and brand name sunglasses. Also on this deck, you'll find fine jewelry and watches. Every day in the program, there was a special shopping section that let you know about any seminars, sales launchings, any free giveaways that were happening throughout the ship so you could plan your day around them. So coming around the corner, we're going to come up to the Champagne Bar. This had a special champagne tea during our sailing that was an extra charge of around 30 US dollars per person. It's also quite popular in the evening with these beautiful 
designs and great photos of old film stars. Heading through the champagne room, we come into the chart room. Now this is where we hung out with our favorite bar waiters, Violetta and Rolando. We also got to hang here with Dan and Lauren, two of our cruise friends and Trips with Angie subscribers. Hello, gentlemen. Each evening they would have special music and it rotated. So this was the Har Harmony String Trio. You could also get snacks after 5 p.m., hot appetizers or cold appetizers. We also had the piano player in here, a jazz trio, as well as an Irish duo. So great place to hang out pre-dinner. Now I will give you a tip. It gets very crowded, but if you have late dinner, come around six o'clock and the chairs start to open up. Across the way from the chart room, we're going to find Sir Samuels. Now, this is the closest thing the Queen Mary 2 has to a coffee shop. They have these fun pastries on board. Then you can come up to the bar or just take a seat and a bar waiter will serve you. And this is where you can get your specialty coffees. You can also get specialty coffees at any of the bars. The hot chocolate was very popular if you're a hot chocolate lover. In the little hallway just off of the Sir Samuels, you will find the tasting room. This had special wine tastings throughout the sailing. Passing by the tasting room and headed towards the back or the aft of the ship, we'll come across the Britannia restaurant. This was the included restaurant for guests in interior ocean view and balcony cabins. On the third deck where we are now was the anytime dining. This was the flexible dining option. You come check in. They show you a table as they are available. Down on deck two was where the set dining times were. 6 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. We found the chicken and turkey dishes to be the most successful. I found the fish dishes to be very salty. I did enjoy the beef filet and shrimp as the surf and turf entree on the galanite, as well as the baked Alaska. This is one of my favorite cruise desserts and the Queen Mary Dew did a lovely job. Now we're going to head down to deck two to see a couple of the lounges we missed when we crossed over on deck three. So here's the second level of the Britannia restaurant turning around and going through the elevator bank there. We're heading back towards mid ship. Now I know this, this ship is a little quirky. Things are kind of all over the place. You'll find the mailbox as well as the Golden Lion Pub. This lounge is the closest thing that the Queen Mary 2 has to a sports bar. As you can see from the TVs here on the wall, this lounge was very popular during our sailing, especially when they showed the Wimbledon finals. You have a huge bar. So normally there's bar stools that kind of go all the way around. Really the only time I could get in here to film was very early in the morning because people start to take their seats early. In fact, one day we got here at 9 a.m. just to make sure we had a seat when the Golden Lion Pub opened at 10 a.m. Back here around and behind the bar is a set of darts and they had organized dart tournaments during sailing. Obviously, you can also just come and play on your own. There is a pub lunch here during the day. It starts from noon till about 2.30. You have your fish and chips, your tikka masala, as well as a beef pot pie. The pot pie flavors change daily and all these seats will be filled. You have the little stage which is available for live music. The Irish duo ended up playing here a lot of the evenings. Across away from the Golden Lion Pub we'll find the photo gallery if you had any pictures taken and now in this very special set of etchings here on deck two there is a Homer Simpson. I challenge you to find it. Let me know in the comments if you do. Otherwise, I can give you a clue. Now, we're going to head back towards the Britannia restaurant because I want to take you further back into the ship into the Queen's room. So, back up the stairs. We call this the secret staircase because it took us a while to find it. It will take you to the art gallery. There are no art auctions on board the Queen Mary 2. There are wonderful art lectures available. We went to a really good one about art heists. The gallery changes every couple days, so you can see a lot of different art. And the art curator is always happy to chat with you. He even challenged us to come up with a plan to, how to steal some of the art from the Queen Mary 2. Heading towards the back of the ship here, we come across the Queen's Room. This huge ballroom area is happening at night. They have a wonderful orchestra that plays dance music in the evenings and people get out and dance. It definitely inspires you to want to take ballroom dancing lessons if you haven't already. The Queen's Room is also the location for the 3.30 p.m. afternoon tea daily. Here are the waiters all coming out with the tea hot and ready to go. This was really a lovely event. I was really glad we went. You do need to get there early. We got there about 3.15 and were able to find a table. You have your tea sandwiches, your cucumber, as well as your scones with your cottage cream and and a selection of desserts. Heading through the Queen's Room, we're going to make our way to G32. 
G32 is the name of the nightclub, which I thought was so cool. I was actually kind of surprised that Queen Mary 2 had a nightclub and that people actually went each evening, especially with so much going on in the Queen's room and the other lounges. In the evening, you'll have so many choices of live music and lounges to go to. So here is the G32 lounge. Some of the choir rehearsals took place here. There was a Queen Mary 2 choir that performed on the last day that rehearsed here daily. They also had some signups and other craft activities in here. It is two stories. Uh, the upper deck is another area just to relax and then you overlook the stage. Four Tunes was our party band on the ceiling and they would play here all your contemporary hits. So the Queen's Room musicians were kind of more ballroom dancing, cha-cha's, rumbas, and the Four Tunes party band was more of your YMCA, you know, ABBA, fun dance music. Well, I guess if you like ballroom dancing, you would think the other music was fun too, but I'm more of a just stand there and wave my arms around type. What about you? Are you a ballroom dancer? Let me know in the comments. All right. So we've been to the back of G32. We're going to come back all the way through the queen, Queen's room, all the way back towards the Britannia and head up stairway D to check out some additional places at the back of the ship. Welcome to deck seven. This is the food deck. So we had Britannia on two and three. Now coming up to deck seven, we're going to find the grills special area. So the grills is basically the sweet class. There's a princess grill and a queen's grill. This is the queen's lounge. I snuck in before it was open. Don't tell anyone. This is where you can come and have your pre-dinner cocktail. It is just for folks who have booked a grills suite. So that again, that's a princess grills or a queen's grills. There is also a Britannia club level. And that area is in the back of the Britannia restaurant. And it looks exactly the same, but it's just in the back of the Britannia restaurant. Here's the queen's grill restaurant. They definitely didn't let me in there. That's on one side. And then on the other side, we're going to find the Princess Grills restaurant. So you have Princess Grills, Queen's Grills, and the Qu Grills Lounge all here in the aft of the ship on deck seven. The Grills restaurants are going to have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner just in the same way the Britannia restaurant does. As you head towards the front of the ship, you'll be able to head outside. Deck seven is a full promenade. It goes all the way around the ship. Around three laps is a mile. Uh, about one lap is about a kilometer, you know, give or take. The front portion of the ship is covered, but the back is open and obviously it can be quite windy depending on the sailing. Now we're heading towards the front of the ship and we've entered the King's Court Buffet. So this area is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and tea. Your included beverages are hot tea, and they had a lot of tea choices, both ca caffeinated and decaf. You have your juices, apple, pineapple, orange, cranberry, your ice water. Then this is the breakfast spread. So this area is actually called the chef's galley, and during the day, this would have pasta and pizza, and then in the evenings, it turns into a special a la carte restaurant where you can pay an extra charge and have an Asian or Indian or Italian menu depending on the night. So again, the pizza and pasta side, limited breakfast buffet. As you head to the side that normally has hamburgers and hot dogs, you'll find your gluten-free items and your substitute milks. This area is called the chef's galley. Heading towards mid -ship, we're going to find the King's Court buffet proper. This is one of the areas you can be casual after 6 p.m. Otherwise, there's a shipwide dress code. The buffet is set up as a rectangle with soft serve uh, machines on the corners. The sides are the same. So it has two sides that meet in the middle. These will all be the same items. And then in the center, there are different things on either side of the buffet. Your typical breakfast buffet made to order eggs, your yogurts, your hash browns, sausages, muesli. So you can really see the overview here of the rectangle uh, where that chef's hat is. That is the center where you're going to find some different made to order things, but you don't need to walk all the way around. 
Corinthia Lounge is a great place to hang out throughout the day. It reminds me of the Atrium on Princess Ships with the International Cafe. You'll have live music. This is where the trivia took place. This here is set up for the 930 Solar tra Solo Traveler meetup every day. And then in the back, they have a limited buffet that offers breakfast, lunch, and tea time. So you can just sit here all day, enjoy all the activities, have snacks, they have bar service, and there's live music throughout the day and into the evening. Heading past the lounge, we're going to enter the spa area. The spa does have a thermal suite. I wasn't able to film it, but we heard some reviews from some guests who were there and they said it needs some love, that there's some tiles missing and it hasn't been um, updated with the rest of the ship. Next to that, you're going to find the fitness center. This is open throughout the day, definitely a standard set of machines. If you go to the left instead of the right as you're entering the spa, you're going to find what I like to call the secret elevator. This starts on deck seven and goes up to deck 11, and it's the only glass enclosed elevator on board. So here we'll get a glimpse of that promenade deck one more time, seeing how you're walking under the lifeboats and that enclosure there at the front of the ship, heading up to deck eight. Now this deck is only available for crew members. We are going to find the beauty shop, the library, the bookshop. So again, we're here at the front of the ship stairway A. The beauty salon has your manicures, pedicures, hairstyles. If you want to get your hair done for gala night, definitely make that appointment early, right when you get on board to make sure there's availability. Across from the beauty salon, we're going to find the bookshop here just off of stairway A and the bookshop is open most of the day. They take kind of a lunch break and this is where you're going to want to go if you want to buy a book to keep. They had a pretty decent selection, especially since I hadn't really seen a bookshop at sea before. You'll also find your postcards and then, you know, perhaps if you forgot a greeting card for a special occasion, you can run up here and grab it. Then you'll head into the library. This is an absolutely beautiful library. I definitely think you want to take a visit here, even if you're not checking out a book. They have key kiosks or little, you know, set up with the computers. If you needed to log into the Wi-Fi, these beautiful chairs right by the windows facing out to the front of the ship. Those are hot commodities. Get here early. And then it's set up like a traditional library with different sections based on your interests, different language books. So all the books are not in English. You can also pick up your crosswords and Sudoku here. You can check out up to two books at one time. Heading up the stairs to deck nine, again, at the front of the ship, we're going to find the Commodore Club. This is a great lounge for your pre-dinner cocktail, though I will tell you they do close those blinds over the front of the ship to avoid any glare or interference with navigational uh, equipment. So probably not the best place to watch sunset if we are heading into the sunset, but they have a nice long bar, great bar service. And in the evenings they have live music. So there's a grand piano here, as you can see to the left. So great piano players on board. There were two during our sailing. There was also a harpist that would play in the evenings around five and six o'clock. In that back corner, you'll find the boardroom. This is a special area for special events. You can book it um, if you needed to have a meeting or a special group meeting. It looked very comfortable. Now heading around to the other side, we're going to find Church Hills. This is the indoor smoking lounge. The outdoor smoking area is located near the terrace bar and I'll show you that a little bit later. Heading out of Church Hills back into what I like to call the secret elevator. We're going to take it up to deck 11, which is where the observation deck is located. But this will give us a great view of the balconies from the side of the ship. So you can see we have our promenade deck on deck seven, our life boats on deck eight, and then the sheltered balconies along the side of the ship. Up here on deck 11, this is where you'll find the observation deck at the very front of the ship. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you. This door was locked because during our sailing, we had a lot of wind. It was very, very windy, but here's a peek at what you would see if you were able to go outside. Now that we're done at the front of the ship, we're going to head all the way to the back to stairway D and check out the veranda. The veranda is the specialty steakhouse. So this is an extra charge. It was open for lunch for $30 per person or dinner for $50 per person during our sailing. Reservations were required. You could make them through the myvoyage.cunard.com the same way you did your planetarium reservations, or you could also make them in advance of your sailing through the Cunard website and prepay. So it is a lovely dining room. Um, we had a decent meal. The sirloin steak wasn't great, but the service was very nice. The appetizers were good and it was good to have a little bit of variety. Now 
Now you can walk through the veranda restaurant to head out to the terrace bar. This opened at 10 a.m. every day. And then when it wasn't so windy and raining, they put out these nice plush pads on those chaise loungers. You have a big deck area. This was a nice covered area. So we sat out here quite a bit, even when it was really foggy, just to get some fresh air. The pool is heated. And then you have the two whirlpools that are heated to an even higher temperature, as well as a shower. Now, this is the smoking area here on the terrace bar. There is a door that comes up directly from deck seven. You'll come up a number of stairs on the side if you don't want to walk through the veranda steakhouse. Now looking over the back, you see those table and chairs. Those are part of the Queen's Grills. And then below that on deck six is where you'll find the Minnows Pool. This is the Kids Club is located directly in front of that. We're not going to show that because it's kids. There's also a stairway that goes all the way up to deck 11, which is where the Grills Terrace is located. The Grills Terrace is a special area just for Queen's and Princess Grill guests. So we'll head up to see the Kennels and the Boardwalk Cafe, one deck above on deck 12, heading outside. Yep, it took me a little bit to open this door because <laughs> the wind was really whipping across the deck. So you have this huge open deck area that is full of tables and chairs, usually as part of nicer sailings because this is where the Boardwalk Cafe is located. The Boardwalk Cafe is one of the few areas on the ship you could actually eat outside. This was one thing we noticed. And we just thought it was because the ship was really designed for crossings, uh, not for warm weather Caribbean sailings. But the Boardwalk Cafe, if it was open, would have a lot of the same items you would find downstairs in the grill. Also up here are the kennels. Yes, you can bring your dog on a transatlantic sailing if you meet all of the requirements. You can only hang out with them in the kennel areas, and it's important to note that the kennel spots do sell out first on every single transatlantic. Walking across the deck, we're going to go up this staircase right near the front of the ship. You see there's a small pickleball court there. I guess you could play abbreviated tennis on it as well. This also has the shuffleboard markings if you wanted to play shuffleboard or they could make, you know, the Zumba class up here or any number of sporting activities, you know, beanbag toss. There's another stairwell that goes even further up to the front of the ship. So you can continue to make your way all the way to the front. And, but here we're going to find the lookout. The lookout is located by going through the staterooms on deck 13, you'll reach the end of the hallway. You'll see a door. You'll open it and you'll come out and see the lookout. This has small windows where you can look out over the bow of the ship and it's also covered. So if you needed a spot outside but covered, you'll just climb up this little staircase and go through that door. Back on the deck, you can see the shuffleboard there and we'll head towards the golf. I guess you can't call it a driving range because it's not very big, but they do have golf clubs, golf balls, and a mat where you could practice your swing while at sea. Now heading back down to deck 12, we're going to check out the pavilion pool. The pavilion pool is the covered indoor pool, and you can see here it's really pretty in here. It does have a retractable roof that they could open if the weather did improve. It has nice cushy loungers. You have the two whirlpools in addition to the main pool. You also have a bar in case you need to a little refreshment and two ping pong or table tennis tables and keep your swing going if you didn't want to play upstairs. So that is the public areas of the Queen Mary 2. Let's head down to deck 11 to check out my cabin 11105. This was a balcony cabin and here's kind of an overview of the room and let's take a closer look. Welcome to cabin 11105. So first off, you have this closet that works great if you brought your own hangers, not so great if you didn't, but you also have your life jackets. You have a set of shelves, a set of drawers, and then another hang up closet that does have hangers, the ones that attach because they don't trust us not to steal their hangers. The temperature gauge is not temperature specific. Now you just kind of put it hotter or cooler. The bathroom is a bit snug. You have the two shelves, some under the sink storage, toilet, and then here is your shower with a handheld shower head and then a small shelf. Coming out here, you have the king size bed with two nightstands on either side with a drawer as well as a small shelf. There are no outlets next to the bed, so you do need to run your CPAP cord across. Uh, you have the desk area, sorry, it's a little messy, as well as a mini fridge, another shelf, you have a tea kettle, and that comes with 
different types of tea as well as instant coffee. And you have a small couch. If we head out on the balcony, we will see it's a little bit enclosed on one side. So you have nice chairs. It's a good sized balcony. And then you see this kind of comes over a little bit there. And then looking out, obviously, no one's looking down on your balcony. And then as you look down, you will get a little bit of the lifeboats as well as the promenade deck. So that's the Queen Mary 2. What did you think? Will you be sailing across the Atlantic anytime soon? Let me know in the comments and be sure to sign up to get these videos right in your inbox. All you have to do is click that link in the comments or the description and enter your email. Thanks. Bye.